The Senate will come to order. I ask all present to please rise. Join with me as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today's invocation will be offered by the Reverend Peter G. Young of the Mother Teresa community here in Albany. Father Young. Thank you very much, Senator. Today, the desire to share in God's love is exemplified by the two gentlemen that I'll speak about who are now going with God in heaven. We want to remember that their kindness was there to help us when we needed, when we were weak, when we were sick or unfortunate. Their love for us and for God has always called upon them to show mercy. God, by your love, you made a world where we have become neighbors to each other and we are enabled to love one another. Grant that we today may too use this Senate to strive toward a way of life in keeping with God's plan. God, you have given us a marvelous example in Senator Pisani and in the senator that we have just lost, again, Thomas Libus, for their service and for their dedication to the, be a public servant in the state of New York. Send down your blessing on these senators who generously devoted themselves to helping our New York State citizens. We pray for these very dedicated public servants. My close comp contemporary friend, Joe Pisani, we traveled together to open up 19 al al alcohol treatment centers for the state, and it was an enjoyable opportunity to be with him in many of those trips. We re remember the goodness of our dear friend Thomas Libus, who in 63 went on to do all of the good work for 13, 14 different terms in service. He was a towering legacy in the papers that I've read about him today. They kept repeating it and repeating it for what he did for Broome County, for District 52, in that class of 71. He ran and won for the district, the, the, the Johnson City, City High School presidency. That was the first time of elected office. It was an amazing kind of thing to hear and to see, being born in 63, being able to be the dedicated kind of guy that he was. We're going to miss him, God. We miss him, and we pray that he'll be able to be an example of dedication to many as he was in the Transportation Committee, the Alcohol Drug Committee, the Mental Health Committee, the Commerce Decision, and all of the kind of economy he brought back again back home for the Triple Cities. May we again pray that he'll reach out and touch us and the many that he specially had an identification with, the Special Olympics, and to Fran, his wife, and his son. May we remember them for the personal kind of dedication that they've given to the floor of the Senators of New York State and the kind of example they've been dedicated to be, to be a light for us in the beacon of hope. Amen. Amen. The reading of the journal. In Senate Tuesday, May 3rd, the Senate met pursuant to adjournment. The journal. We have some order in the House, please. The Secretary will continue. The Senate Tuesday, May 3rd, the Senate met pursuant to adjournment. The journal of Monday, May 3rd, 2nd, was read and approved on motion. Senate adjourned. Without objection, the journal will stand approved as read. Presentation of petitions. Messages from the Assembly. Secretary will read. On page 25, Senator Lanza moved to discharge from the Committee on Codes Assembly Bill Number 47A and substituted for the identical Senate Bill. 3484A, 30 in calendar 487. Substitution is so ordered. Messages from the Governor, reports of standing committees, reports of select committees, communications and reports from state officers, motions and resolutions. Senator DeFrancisco. On page 11, I offer the following amendment to calendar 83, Senate print number 6091A by Senator Hannon, asked that the bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. The amendments are received and the bill shall retain its place you? on third reading. Again, I'm going to ask from some order in the House, please. 
Senator Francisco. Yes. Now, would you uh, please um, take up resolution? Oh, can we first adopt the uh, resolution calendar, with the exception of resolution 5134? The resolution calendar is before the House. All in favor of adopting the resolution calendar, with the exception of resolution number 5134, signify by saying aye. Opposed? The resolution calendar is adopted. Senator DeFrancisco. Uh, would you please take up resolution 5134, uh, read it in its entirety, and call on me to speak, please. <laughs> Secretary will read. Legislative resolution number 5134 by Senator DeFrancisco, congratulating the Syracuse University women's basketball team upon the occasion of its record-breaking season, which led them to the first National Collegiate Athletic Association. I'm going to ask the sergeants to please advise and ask all staff to keep your conversations outside the chamber. Members also, please. We have guests in the House and some important business before the House. Secretary will continue. Legislative resolution number 5134 by Senator DeFrancisco, congratulating the Syracuse University women's basketball team upon the occasion of its record-breaking season, which led them to the first National Collegiate Athletic Association women's championship game in program history. Whereas excellence and success in competitive sports can be achieved through strenuous practice teamwork, and a dedicated coaching staff. And whereas, it is the sense of this legislative body to recognize and pay tribute to those student athletes within our midst who, by achieving outstanding success in their athletic competition, have inspired and brought great pride to their college and community. And whereas, athletic competition enhances the moral and physical development of the young people of this state, preparing them for the future by instilling in them the value of teamwork, encouraging a standard of healthy living, imparting a desire for success, and by developing a sense of fair play and competition. And whereas attended to such concern in a full accord with its long-standing traditions, this legislative body is justly proud to congratulate and recognize the Syracuse University women's basketball team upon the occasion of its record-breaking season, which led them to the first National Collegiate Athletic Association women's championship game in program history. And whereas, following its historic run to the NCAA championship game, Syracuse University women's basketball team, with an overall record of 30 and 8, shot to its highest ranking in program history in the USA Today coaches poll, reaching number three nationwide. And whereas, the Syracuse University women's basketball team has also achieved the most wins in program history, as well as its program's first Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, and NCAA championship game appearances. And whereas, on March 20, 2016, the number 1415 Syracuse University women's basketball team fought its way to the program's first Sweet 16 appearance after defeating Albany 76-59 in the Carrier Dome. The win marked another record-breaking day in the historic season for Syracuse with the team's 27th victory and with the senior class earning its 96th win. And whereas, at the Sweet 16 in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the Syracuse University women's basketball team upset top-seeded South Carolina 80-72 to, to advance to the Elite Eight, where it then landed a 89-67 victory over Tennessee, with the impressive contest setting yet another program record for the points scored in an NCAA tournament game by the Syracuse University Orange. And whereas, further history was made when the Syracuse University women's basketball team hustled its way to the NCAA Tournament Final with a dominant 80-59 victory over the Washington Huskies at the Final Four in Indianapolis on April 3rd. The victory placed the program one win away from a national title and marked the first 31 season in program history, giving the 2016 Syracuse University Women's Basketball Senior Class 99 wins for the collegiate careers. And whereas to the Syracuse University Women's Basketball team lost the NCAA Tournament title, to the University of Connecticut. The team played hard, never gave up, and kept their heads high. And whereas the outstanding athletic talent, teamwork, and sportsmanship displayed by the Syracuse University women's basketball team is due in great part to the skilled and supportive efforts of head coach Quentin Hillsman, associate head coach Von Reed, assistant coach Tammy Reese, assistant coach Cedric Solis, and multimedia and technology director Ryan Nichols. And whereas throughout the season, the support of fans within both the Syracuse University 
and Central New York communities significantly grew in enthusiasm. And whereas members of the Syracuse University women's basketball team rallied behind one another in establishing a sisterhood of athletic ability, good sportsmanship, honor, and scholarship, while demonstrating that these team players are of the highest caliber while contributing to the spirit of excellence that is the tradition of their university. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this legislative body pauses deliberations to congratulate the Syracuse U University women's basketball team, its outstanding members, Alexis Peterson, Julia Chandler, Maggie Morrison, Jade Phillips, Isabella Slim, Cornelia Fondren, Alea Parrish, Brianna Butler, Savannah Crochetti, Brittany Sykes, Danielle Mignot, Taylor Ford, Brandy Fowler, Davida Dale, Abby Grant, Brianna Day, and Bria Day, and Head Coach Quentin Hillsman, Associate Head Coach Von Reed, Assistant Coach Tammy Reese, Assistant Coach Cedric Soldis, and Multimedia Technology Director Ryan Nichols on their outstanding season and overall team record. And be it further resolved that copies of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to the members of the Syracuse University women's basketball team and the aforementioned coaches and staff. Senator DeFrancisco. Yes, I'm probably more excited that they're here than they are, quite frankly, uh, because I watch with great interest as this team made history week after week after week. Uh, it hadn't been, uh, in the recent past, it's been difficult to get in, first of all, to get in the tournament, and then to get in some of the steps of the tournament. And so when they got into the Sweet 16 this year, that was a major accomplishment. At least most of us thought it wasn't major to them because they knew what they had on the team and they knew they were going further. Then the Elite Eight, and uh, finally the Final Four where they got to the final game. It was so exciting, so unbelievable. When they were in my office earlier for a, a brief lunch, uh, I compared them to the days of Syracuse men's basketball when Dave Bing brought the, bought the uh, Syracuse University team into a different era, a nationally known era, a nationally uh, recognized team, and this is what's really happening. We're, we're experiencing history right now. Uh, we are extremely proud of all the players, and I'm not going to read all of them off, but uh, Coach uh, Quentin Hillsman, who is an animal. You watch him on the sideline, you think he needs a tranquilizer. But he obviously knows how to motivate his players, and uh, he's a pretty aggressive guy, and I like those kind of guys and gals. So. Uh, it's an amazing accomplishment. I'm just so happy that they were able to be here to be honored, and uh, they're going to be here next year to be honored as the national champions. So uh, I just thought we'd give them a preview of what it's like to come, and maybe we'll have something better for lunch next year. So thank you for being here. And by the way, we've got the uh, uh, both uh, college and pro football Hall of Fame administrator from Syracuse University here today, Floyd Little. He's in the back of the room. He was pretty good, too. He was pretty good, too. So uh, thank you, Mr. President, and congratulations to all of you. Senator Valeski. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm pleased to join Senator DeFrancisco in co-sponsoring this resolution and saluting our, our champions back in Syracuse, the Syracuse University women's uh, basketball team. Uh, those of us from Syracuse and Central New York and fans of the Orange have grown accustomed uh, for a long, long time to success from the men's program. Uh, and we look forward to certainly continued success there. But you all, as Senator DeFrancisco has indicated in his remarks, you've set a new paradigm for the university and for the community and certainly for the fan base of Syracuse University. The women now, along with the men, uh, will be expected to continue to do great things on the basketball court and continue to be leaders in our community back home. So congratulations. Thanks for being here. Enjoy your, uh, your stay here in Albany. Senator Stavisky. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for sponsoring the resolution, Senator DeFrancisco. Uh, I rise as a proud graduate of Syracuse. Uh, the only problem is that when I went to Syracuse, we didn't have Title IX, so there was no chance for women to compete in any sport. And I think it's a testimonial uh, to Title IX and the fact that it has opened up uh, so many opportunities for women athletes, and I congratulate uh, um, the women's basketball team on their achievements and welcome uh, uh, the Football Hall of Fame, uh, Mr. Bing and Mr. And Mr. Little, because that was my generation of, at, when I was at Syracuse. So again, thank you. Once again, uh, the resolution is uh, before the House. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Again, we want to extend our congratulations and our warmest welcome, and we extend the privileges of the House to the uh, ladies' basketball team. We're very proud of you, to the coaches and the support staff. And we're very honored to have an All-American in Floyd Little, uh, a great football player and a legend. So thank you all. Rise again and be recognized. Senator DeFrancisco, I take it you'd like to open the resolution for co-sponsorship? Absolutely. The resolution is open for co-sponsorship. Uh, if, you, if you are not in favor, please signify the desk. Senator DeFrancisco. You want to recognize Carlucci? Can we now move to adopt the one resolution that we uh, held back from the resolution calendar adoption, resolution uh, number 5134? and uh, recognize Senator uh, Carlucci. Don't have, there's no need to read it, just the short title. Senator uh, DeFrancisco, if you'll take a moment, we'd like to consult with, go ahead. You don't have to consult okay. with anybody. Because I was you, mistaken you, and I readily admit Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Would you just please call on Senator Carlucci? Okay. He has a guest to introduce. Very good. Uh, we have passed resolution number 5134, and now we would call on Senator Carlucci for the purposes of an introduction. Well, thank you, Mr. President. It's an absolute honor and a privilege uh, to be able to acknowledge and introduce a special guest that we have visiting us here today. Uh, we have from Seton Hall University, Dr. William Connell, who uh, is a w world renowned uh, professor and historian on Italian history and Italian American history. And he was graceful and uh, um, gave us a presentation today on Columbus. And uh, he presented to the Italian American Legislators Conference, and we had many staff uh, members that were here today. So we just thank you for spending your time uh, with us today uh, to uh, fill us in on the history and your experience in this area. So we're so pleased to have you here today and want to thank you for working with us, and we look forward to working with you in the future. So thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me to acknowledge Dr. William Connell, and thank you for your presence here today. Thank you. Dr. Connell, welcome to the House. Senator DeFrancisco. Uh, would you please recognize uh, Senator Flanagan? Can we have some order in the House again, please? Senator Flanagan. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I feel bad that the young ladies and the coaches had left because there's uh, two things that I was going to say in relation to that resolution. First is that we oftentimes focus on the things that are great theater and great media, but not a lot of people talk about what a fantastic academic university Syracuse is. So I think they're first reputation lies in that area. All the other stuff is icing on top of a cake that was already properly and well baked. Second thing is, I was gonna tell those young ladies that they should never play basketball with DeFrancisco because I've played with him and he's a great shooter, but he stinks at passing. <laughs> <laughs> and he takes great pride in that. So I, um, I rise for a very important point to make and Yesterday, yesterday was a very sad day for the people of the great state of New York, for the people of the southern tier, 
for the Libis family, for the Senate family, and for all the people who knew and had great affection and love for Tom Libis. Now, we are going to have a separate time and place. I've spoken to Senator Gennaris. Let me be clear. On May 17th, we are going to have a proper and more formal resolution advanced in honor of Senator Libis, in large part so we can pay respect to him while his family is here. So at that time, I would suggest that would be the appropriate venue and moment for people to offer their thoughts. And I'm sure there are going to be plenty of them. But what I wanted to do today was concise, clear, and simple. The Senate is a family. And no matter how long you've been here, you find that out pretty quickly. Tom Libis was a fantastic public servant. He was so proud of representing his community. And let's be clear, Senator Akshar has a very, very difficult job. Tom was a giant in Broome County and Senate District 52. And the people of those communities, I'm not sure that they ever truly appreciated the depth and scope and breadth of his experience and his talent. He was clever. He was smart. He could be a pain in the neck sometimes, which worked to our benefit. But he was a born and bred New Yorker. He was so eminently proud of being a public servant, being a New York State Senator, being from the Southern Tier, and serving in this House. And he got a chance to sit in the seat that Senator uh, DeFrancisco is in now, have a, an excellent working relationship with a couple, occasional bump in the road with Senator Gennaris. But on the whole, they developed a very collegial, strong working relationship. So I learned something today that I think is very useful. Um, but before I do that, I just want to recognize, you know, you try and find a silver lining in things that go on in life. Everybody knows what a diehard fan Tom Libis was of the New York Mets. All right? I'm a Yankees fan. Lanz is a Yankees fan. Janaris is a Mets fan. Roback is a Mets fan. So we have our rivalries. But we are New Yorkers, first and foremost. So I checked. And everybody reads the stuff in the media. I just want to make sure I'm giving my numbers out exactly correct. Much to my chagrin, the Yankees are now 8 and 16. <laughs> breaks, the, you know, breaks my heart. More importantly, and this is a blessing for Tom Libis. The Mets are 16 and 9. So that's great for him. And I was thinking about this. He gets to watch, he gets to watch the Mets now. He just has better seats. Now, we learn from the people we work with. And there's a very talented young lady on our staff who's seated here right now who gave me uh, good advice this morning. Sometimes we get too solemn on occasions about life when what we should be doing is celebrating life. So rather than a traditional moment of silence to acknowledge the solemnity of Senator Libis's passing, we're going to veer down a different path. And as a celebration of his life, we're going to stand up and we're going to give him a moment of applause. If you would please join me on behalf of Senator Tom Libis. Senate in extending our love and affection and condolences to Fran and the Libis family. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Flanagan. Hey, would you now? One other uh, matter of business, would you please recognize Senator O'Mara uh, for the introduction of a guest. Senator O'Mara.
Thank you, uh, Mr. President. It's uh, my privilege uh, to rise here today to, to welcome to the chamber, uh, seated up here, the uh, Dundee Central School Symphonic Steel Drum Band. Uh, they're here with us today. Uh, they'll be performing uh, at our uh, wine tasting event in the well, which is going on now. So the quicker we get done with session, we can go over and enjoy some New York State wines uh, uh, and their music. The, the Dundee Steel Drum Band was formed uh, in the 1970s. Uh, and has had a great history, traveling throughout the world to countries like Denmark, Germany, Scotland, Disney World, and the World's Fair in Knoxville, Tennessee, and today, the well of the Yellow Bee. Uh, they're here with uh, co-directors Randy and Lynette Knapp, uh, students from uh, grades 7 through 12, Isabella Lewandowski, Whisper Davis, Adele Fishbaugh, Hallie Empson, Mercedes Roy, Paul King, Michelle Connor, Tanner Morrison, Colin Howell, Colin Goodman, Cameron Howell, and Ronnie Nissen. I welcome you all to the chamber today. Thank you for being here to perform uh, at the uh, New York State Wine Tasting event this evening. And please, uh, Mr. President, uh, offer them uh, a welcome and the privileges of the House. Thank you, Senator O'Mara. We welcome the Dundee Steel Drum Band here uh, and your directors and the talented musicians. Uh, we extend the privileges of the House and we look forward to hearing you later on. Please rise and be recognized. <laughs> Senator DeFrancisco. Would you please take up the non-controversial reading of the calendar? Secretary will read. Calendar number 156 by Senator Davo, Senate Print 4113, enactment of the Civil Service Law. Last section. Section 2, the statute take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Flanagan, Klein Stewart Cousins Young, ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 225 by Senator Marcelino, Senate Print 5795, enactment of the Education Law. Last section. Section 7, the set. Laid aside for the day. Calendar number 226 by Senator Marcelino, Senate Print 6514, and recommend the education law. Last set. Laid aside for the day. Calendar number 295 by Senator Bonasek, Senate Print 1636A, and recommend the judiciary law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Fuente and Klein Stewart Cousins Young. Senator Bonasek to explain his vote. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. You know, this past week, uh, there were 79 volunteer fire companies that responded uh, to a forest fire of 2,000 acres in Ulster County. And they were all volunteers that took time from their family and jobs to do that. And the tremendous debt that we owe to volunteers. And you would say, why did you start off this discussion about a fire and volunteers? Because this bill is about CASA. CASA is also a bunch of volunteers throughout the state that are trained uh, to look after children's welfare, foster children, children that have been abused, and they make these reports to the family court. So the family court is more knowledgeable on how to handle cases before them. And they do a tremendous service. They handle thousands and thousands of children. And each year, my good colleagues in the Senate pass this bill unanimously. You did it in 2014, you did it in 2015, and I hope you do it today. We get no movement in the Assembly. And why do you think that is? Because if you went in your district and asked anybody about the CASA program, they would tell you it's exemplary and thank God for these volunteers. It's because it's a food fight for the dollar. You see these organizations, legal aid, welfare organizations, they're, they're always a category in the budget and they always get money. So they do not want to see CASA elevated to a statutory reimbursement in the budget. And by the way, it's $800,000 and they saved the state millions because of less burdens 
on all those state agencies that are supposed to look after children. So I vote aye, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Senator Bionisek to be recorded in the affirmative. Announce the results. Ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 325 by Senator Hannon, Senate Print 605, and act amend the real property tax law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes 57, nays 1, Senator Sanders recorded the negative. Bills passed. Calendar number 394 by Senator Klein, Senate Print 5365A, and act amend the public housing law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 30th day. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 413 by Senator Valeski, Senate Print 642, an act in the State Administrative Procedure Act. Last section. Section 11, this act should take effect on the 120th day. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 429 by Senator Avella, Senate Print 3199B, an act amend the penal law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Senator DeFrancisco to explain his vote. Yes, we had passed a bill similar to this earlier this session, and uh, just for clarity, uh, that bill uh, made possession of a machete, no matter what you do with it, a crime. Uh, this bill, we ended up recalling that bill, and uh, this bill basically is much clearer that possession of a machete uh, is a crime when you have an intent to use it unlawfully against another person, not the mere possession without that unlawful intent. So I just want to clarify that. I vote aye. Senator Francisco to be recorded in the affirmative. Uh, Secretary will announce. In relation to calendar 429, those recorded the negative are Senators Amador, Ort, and Ranzenhofer. Ayes 55, nays 3. Did you want to Bill's passed. Bill's passed. Secretary will continue. Calendar number 482 by Senator Lanza, Senate Print 3324, and act amend the penal law. Last section. Section 2 is that you take effect on the 1st of November. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. In relation to calendar 482, those recorded the negative are Senators Hassel Thompson, Montgomery, Perkins, and Sanders. Ayes 54, nays 4. The bill's passed. Calendar number 487 by member of the Assembly Paul and Assembly Print 47A, and act amend the penal law. Real last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Senator Hassel Thompson to explain her vote. Um, just a, thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a comment. I learned today that the country of Nigeria has now banned female mutilation, and it has been a historical practice and I am very happy to see that the state of New York um, has also put into effect um, making this a go. So um, I thank um, Senator Lanza and, and Assemblywoman Pauling for this piece of legislation. I vote aye. How did she? Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson to be recorded in the affirmative. Announce the results. Ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 536 by Senator Lanza, Senator Print 6931B, an act amend the Arts and Cultural Affairs Law. Last section. Lay the bill aside. Lay it aside for the day. Calendar number 547 by Senator Seward, Senator Print 1672, an act amend the Insurance Law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes 57, nays 1, Senator Kruger recorded the negative. Bill's passed. Calendar number 549 by Senator Seward, Senate Print 5249B, an act amend the insurance law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes 58. Bill's passed. 
Calendar number 556 by Senator Marcelino, Senator Print 416, and act amend the education law. Last section. Section 2, the statute take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Fuente and Klein Stewart Cousin Jung, ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 557 by Senator Ranzanoff for Senator Print 1052, and act amend the education law. Last section. Section 2, the statute take effect on the 1st of July. Call the roll. Adabo Fuente and Klein Stewart Cousin Jung, Relation to uh, relation to calendar 557, those recorded in the negative are Senators Avella, Carlucci, Hoyleman, Kruger, Montgomery, and Sanders. Ayes 52, nays 6. Bills passed. Calendar number 559 by Senator Farley, Senator Print 2895, an act amend the education law. Last section. Section 2, the statute take effect on the 1st of September. Call the roll. Adabo, Flanda, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung, ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 562 by Senator Marcelino, Senator Print 6563, an act related to legalizing, validating, and ratifying. Last section. Section 3, the statute take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flanda, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung, ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 563 by Senator Latimer, Senate Print 6765, an act amend the education law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung, ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 568 by Senator Ritchie, Senate Print 6863, an act amend the environmental conservation law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung, Relation to calendar 568, those recorded in the negative are Senators Hoyleman, Serrano, and Squadron. Okay. Relation to calendar 568, those recorded in the negative are Senators Hoyleman, Kruger, Rivera, Serrano, and Squadron. Ayes 53, nays 5. Bills passed. Calendar number 569 by Senator Gallivan, Senate Print 90, enact amend the executive law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 1st of November. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung, ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 570 by Senator Lavelle, Senate Print 251, enact amend the public health law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung, ayes 58. Bills passed. Get, get done. Calendar number 571 by Senator Golan, Senate Print 785, and I commend the executive law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 1st of January. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung, ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 574 by Senator Carlucci, Senate Print 1227A, and I commend the alcoholic beverage control law. Last section. Section 11, this act should take effect on the 1st of January. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, hey. Jung, ayes 58. Bills passed. I was trying to get hold Gallon of Gallon number 575 by Senator Golan, Senate Print 1460, and act amend the executive law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act so, should take effect immediately. All right. All right. Bye. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes 57, nays 1, Senator Perkins recorded in the negative. Bills passed. Gallon number 576 by Senator Golan, Senate Print 1473A. And I commend the education law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Yeah. We're on calendar number 576 by Senator Golden. Okay, Secretary will announce. Ayes 56, nays 2, Senator T. Francisco and Perkins recorded the negative. The bill is passed. <laughs> Calendar number 577 by Senator Bonasek, Senate Print 1631A, an act amended general municipal law. Last section. Section 9, this has to take effect on the 180th day. 
Call the roll. Adabo, Flanagan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Kruger. Ayes 57, nays 1, Senator Kruger recorded in the negative. Bills passed. Calendar number 582 by Senator Ort, Senator print 2974, not amend the education law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flanagan, Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Jung. Ayes 58. Bills passed. Calendar number 586 by Senator Croce, Senate print 3405A. And act amend the executive law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flanagan, Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Jung. Kruger. Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Parker recorded, or Senator Kruger recorded the negative. Bill is passed. <laughs> I saw him walk. Calendar number 587 by Senator Croce, Senate print 